Hello YouTube, and a special hello to any bronies who may be listening in the future. I'm going to be doing my first MLP fanfiction reading. Before I start, I just want to give a shout out to Flametail114, who is the latest in my handful of subscribers and used two of my videos to start a playlist. That sort of inspired me to finally buy a mic and start doing fanfic readings and become a YouTube brony, so thanks for that. Just to kind of break in, I'll be reading Octaves Beyond by Guitar Kirby. The link will be posted below as usual. I've skimmed it a little. It's Slice of Life. Probably will transition into Romance later on, I couldn't say, because it's incomplete at the moment. Only three chapters right now. So I'm not sure how long this will be either. I might be able to fit at least two in one video. So we'll just see. Chapters are pretty short. But anyway, thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoy. Chapter 1. Practice. Octavia slid her bow across the amber resin. Her lavender eyes had a hard look, her eyebrows low as she looked at the large instrument sitting in the open case. Although she had a generally relaxed outlook on life, music was her ultimate passion. It demanded her full attention when she did play, which was quite often, and any part of that process felt very involved to her. She put the resin back in its small cardboard case and lifted the cello from the leathery holder. The wood felt smooth under her hoof, the metal strings cool to the touch. She tuned the instrument and lifted the bow to the strings. As she pulled it across and a low tone sounded, a spark felt as though it shot through her soul. She began to play, the rich tones of the cello echoing throughout her home. The sound was undeniably beautiful. Her heart began to pump and sweat began to drip from her brow as she played faster. Her mane whipped around her face. She had not the thought to pull it back as she usually did. She continued playing, her speed quickening even more. Her hoof slid up and down the instrument, the strings pushing back against it. Finally, she began to slow down, the rich tones becoming deeper, until the tune finally ended. She set the instrument and bow back in their case. Her coat shone with sweat. She checked the time. She had played for a full hour and a half, which was actually a shorter time than usual. She sighed and locked the case. She then trotted from her home, smiling as the sun evaporated the sheen of sweat from her mane and coat. Shady Sound shook his head irritably. The sound of bustling ponies throughout Canterlot wasn't as loud as it was in Manhattan, but it was certainly enough to drown out his thoughts. He walked along, a beat playing through his mind that matched the click-clack of his hooves on the brick beneath. As he trotted along, he turned down a street he had not before. He tried to find new routes for his daily walks each time he went out for them. The street turned out open homes. He looked from side to side, and each was a mere one story tall, but pleasantly colored to match the color of Celestia's castle, which watched over all. As he walked, he heard something coming from one of the houses. He stopped, the unmistakable sound of a cello being played. The piece was fast and high-pitched for a cello. Despite the complexity of it, the player made no mistakes, so far as he could tell. He turned to the source of the sound. On the front door was a lavender treble clef, worked into a knocker. He wanted to go see who was playing, but at the same time refused to walk up to the door and interrupt the beautiful music. He walked closer and sat on the sidewalk in front of the house. He nodded along to the beat of the tune. His back leg began tapping slightly so that his cutie mark, a music sheet surrounded by the handles of various instruments, wobbled on his black coat. His wings fluttered in his enthusiasm. His mane bounced in time with the music, dark gray with multiple streaks of dark violet color. He smiled as the music finally slowed and ended. Although he enjoyed all music, classical held a special place in his heart. He turned around and began trotting back home. The noise didn't bother him so much anymore. When Shady arrived home, he immediately went to his piano. The tune from earlier was still fresh in his mind, and he wrote what he could decipher from it on a sheet of paper. He embellished some parts, and those he couldn't remember he improvised. He stared at what he had written for several minutes. The piece meandered up and down the sheet, switching from minor to major key in several places. Complicated, perhaps, but not beyond his ability to play. It just needed a name. I think I know where to get a name for this piece. Shady smiled, and added the papers to a new folder, which he labeled The Treble House. 
It wasn't the piece's name, but he needed a reference so that he could find it again when he was ready. Well, I was right. That was pretty short, so I'm just going to go on to chapter two and see where that gets me. So, here we go. Chapter two. Musical magic. Octavia strolled out into the main plaza of Canterlot. She smiled. The area was always busy, and she was virtually guaranteed to have someone recognize her. However, she went out for the sound. It inspired music for her, the bustle of ponies going about their everyday business. A pegasus ruffling its feathers, the spark of a unicorn's horn activating. It was enthralling. It didn't have the electricity of Manhattan, but she found that much activity distracting. Nor was it so quiet as the nearby town of Ponyville. She sometimes visited Ponyville for a break from the sounds that would interrupt her playing. She found the quiet little town lacked a central spark for musical inspiration, however, so she stayed permanently in Canterlot. The castle constantly cast a shadow over the city. Although the structure itself was grand, she found it a bit dismal when her neighborhood was darkened. She lacked a name for the piece she'd been playing earlier. She'd been playing with the word octave since the piece was unusually high for a cello. She had also wondered whether she oughtn't get someone to accompany her on viola or piano. Not vinyl scratch, she thought of the local DJ who had gotten a rather loyal following. That pony is far too... electronic for what I... Her train of thought was interrupted when she nearly tripped over a young colt who was looking up at her with shining eyes. Are you Octavia? he asked. She smiled and nodded, and his eyes widened. Wow! My parents love your music. I didn't know you lived in Canterlot. Are you friends with Princess Celestia? Octavia giggled quietly. No, not personally, but I have met her. She turned around dramatically, as though checking for someone listening in on her conversation, then turned back to the colt and gave a stage whisper. Want to know a secret, though? He nodded. You can go into the castle and meet Princess Celestia at day. Then at night you can meet Princess Luna. The colt jumped in excitement. Really? Yes, really. But don't tell anyone that I told you, okay? The colt shook his head and ran off, towards a unicorn and earth pony she assumed were his parents. She looked up to the sky and continued her walk through the town. She listened carefully as she reached the center of the plaza. The hustle and bustle created a rhythm that vibrated through the ground. It felt like a party could break out at any moment if someone just gave the world a jolt. She wasn't the pony to do it. But she knew that one existed, somewhere. Perhaps I could join that pony, if I ever meet him or her. She snorted. What was she thinking? She had to focus on her music. She continued down the street, towards the small collection of shops that she knew only too well. Shady stretched out on his bed. He had the song he had written down playing through his head as he had written, rather than as he had heard it played. It kept nagging at him like a thorn in his hoof. His tail flicked slightly, and he stared out the window. "'Who are you?' he asked. The sky displayed a distinct lack of speech. He hopped off his bed and looked out at the trees. The sky displayed a distinct lack of speech. He hopped off his bed and looked out at the trees. He lived just outside of Canterlot, where the forest could surround him. He pressed a hoof against his head, thinking out loud. "'Whoever you are, you certainly know how to play.' Where have I heard that style of cello before? The thought seemed to awaken a spark in him. He jumped up and flew to his CD shelf. There were hundreds of CDs there, nigh on a thousand. He looked through the area marked classical. The rack wasn't the most filled, but it was put before the others in importance. He looked through and took a not-so-random case off the rack. It was a classical cello CD made by some pony named Octavia. He slid it into his CD player, which started up. The effect was instant. The cello began its low, rich tones, making Shady's body vibrate. He blinked. That was certainly the play style he had heard earlier. The slow, low tones with a light vibrato to add to the emotion behind each and every note. She hit the notes exactly in the center, never too flat or sharp. Incredible. He hadn't listened to this CD in some time, but he could understand why. This was the sort of music used only for special occasions and situations. He stopped the CD. 
He had found the home of Octavia, one of the most famous musicians in Equestria, and she lived twenty minutes from his house. Well, I'm at the ten minute mark now, so I'm gonna stop here and switch over to another video for chapter three. Not much going on for now, but as that ending implies, I think next time is where these two are gonna meet. So yeah, I'm gonna record chapter three now and just make a second part, so stay tuned, and bye for now. Thanks.